Okay, so what we had discussed yesterday was about the architecture of um, Hadoop uh, 1.0 version and um, how it functions, the scheduler, map task, everything we had discussed yesterday. And also we had discussed some of the challenges um, that we face in Hadoop 1.0, right? Now, today we are going to discuss about class uh, Hadoop 2.0 version, okay? Uh, before that, we quickly recollect what is the difference between Hadoop 1.0 and 2.0? What are the challenges we uh, face in 1.0? So all these things we quickly go through it and we'll try to refer as many details as possible. The first more the yes. first and the first and foremost challenge in a uh, uh, name node. Uh, I mean like uh, uh, 1.0 version uh, No horizontal improvement. So if you look back over here in this slide We have got only one name node and you can you can have a, any number of data nodes that means You can increase the data nodes, but whereas the name node you can't you can't horizontally you can't increase it so irrespective of how many data nodes you have got you still have to maintain one single name node so that's one of the biggest challenge so and um, that means one name node have to coordinate with uh, data nodes and the second thing uh, no high level uh, no um, high availability that means uh, we also discussed if there is a problem with the name node if it breaks down um, you have to fix it and you have to wait until the system up and running so you can't guarantee the system will be up and running 24 7 the third one is if any of these cases the system is breakdown um, the name node has got trouble uh, the, uh, you know um, you know if you if, if you um, come across any issues with the name node you have to manually fix it and until the until the system is manually fixed um, you have to hold the business so this is not something um, acceptable or considered uh, in all the businesses right so and um, the other challenges in this case you know if, if you see here uh, we have got one job tracker and uh, we have got multiple task trackers what is the job of a, a job tracker it needs to process the jobs uh, which client assigned or asked to do it and distribute the task split the task and distribute across the slave nodes as a tasks and get the job done by any chance if the task get failed um, and again the scheduler have to collect those failed jobs and assign it to the rest, uh, other slave nodes and get the job done likewise if you have got you know 10 jobs or 100 job a single job tracker have to handle all these tasks therefore it is highly um, you know overloading uh, job for a job tracker okay so and also in the name node now everything is in memory right so in memory in the sense what are the RAM the name node have got uh, the process uh, is you know executed in, you know as per the size of the name as per the size of the uh, RAM but if your business grows and the data processing get increased what are the name node size you have got and that's it you have to limit to it or else you can increase uh, RAM size and you just uh, reach to, to reach to the maximum size of the RAM. therefore you still hit the limitations you properly have to plan it and you just cannot easily or you are not flexible to manage any any huge amount of uh, data so whatever the ram size whatever the hardware um, you know uh, size you have got you just have to limit yourself right and also we discuss if the name node is crashed so that's it you just have to uh, manually process it so these are the challenges or limitations uh, we have got in you know uh, you know architecture 1.0 so uh, this is something uh, not acceptable or uh, you know reliable for a business especially the business scenarios like financial organizations it is not possible at all right so there are many many other challenges uh, you know if i can list out now in this session we explicitly discuss about those challenges what we have got in 1.0 version
So if you are very well aware of those 1.0 you know, version challenges, it is quite easy for us to quickly uh, analyze and um, you know understand more about the 2.0 capabilities right so i would also stretch one of the other important point about the job tracker challenge okay so what that mean is job tracker challenge so the job tracker as i mentioned that exists in the main memory which is a name node whereas the task ta task trackers are in the data nodes the data nodes can be increased uh, to, to any size as long as your name node can be able to coordinate and manage the data nodes so that means job tracker significantly handles uh, the processing task processing from the uh, slave nodes so one single listener whether you have got 10 tasks or 200 tasks whether you have got uh, you know five a slave nodes or 500 slave nodes one single listener from the name node so one is to five or one is to five hundred thousand so it's not uh, um, reasonably um, in a supporting process right so you should you should have kind of a flexibility like uh, if you have if one name node is managed uh, for uh, can be managed for 10 uh, data nodes that's fine and um, you know that means you uh, the capability you are scaling down that's that's one of the biggest challenge so a simple example what i can um, say is for example in your business let's say um one you know one, one business case let me take one of the uh, example like sure yeah let me take one of the financial uh, client example there is a customer so what customer does is uh, they basically um, you know mortgage advising company okay so the mortgage advising company handles their customer uh, requ requests and uh, advise the best mortgages uh, loans uh, lending um, opportunities they have got for their customers right so the company is growing really well and they have got uh, over 50 branches throughout the country and they are rapidly growing every day uh, agents throw uh, requests to their hadoop system saying that okay my customer requ my customer requirements is this their income details are this assets are this and they put all this information and they ask for the the best lender um which matches to their uh, customer requirements and you know, best uh, you know interest rates available so all these criteria they want to list out right they just need only top 10 lenders they can first approach um rather to go one after another so this is what they have got and obviously lender market is huge let's say they have got you know hundreds and thousands private approved of you know banking so so corporate you know all these uh, lenders they have got now to process one agent requests they have to surf their databases they have to surf all the information they have got and finally the user should be able to get only top 10 list uh, based on the criteria given so what if if one agent can do that that's fine job tracker one single name node can I split the task uh, let's say they have got 10,000 plus uh, um, you know agents or uh, um, lenders they have got they surf through it and uh, they display the results what if if 10 bra 10 users i mean 10 agents what if if 10 branches at a time they do it so what if one agent handles one each agent um, you know uh, asks for these kind of uh, asks for a uh, processing for uh, multiple customers at a time so if if you look into the this kind of a business challenge 24/7 number of agents number of you know clients for each agent they keep assigning these tasks to this job tracker so now imagine what sort of burden it has got if if let's say one agent requests okay if one agent request is worth of 1 gb data processing okay now if it is 1 gb data processing it's 128 mb to be processed right whatever the data it has got inside the data nodes each data is split into 128 mb which is saved so far in the data nodes so 1 gp 
uh, ratio of 128 MB, which will be 8000 mappers. What is mapper? Before I speak about mapper, I'll say first when we receive, when a, you know, Hadoop receive a request, the task is divided into two stages. The first one is mapping. The second one is reducing. We'll talk in detail. Okay, we'll talk in detail. What is mapper? What is a reducer? Map is a again further further split categorization. Split the task. Okay, surf the entire data and split it into the number of buckets. And reducer is merging the buckets. Okay, map is take the task and uh, process the data and again split into multiple uh, categories or multiple buckets and reduce the merging just simply remember this uh, definition uh, of course this is not a complete definition but uh, to make you more um, you know clarity uh, you get more clarity when we approach for the sessions but until now just remember map is just like you have got huge amount of data and you split into small buckets and reduce is merging all buckets that's it so 128 mb each pixel is one, uh, one GB data. Each pixel is one twenty-eight MB, and that that leads to eight thousand mappers. Okay, so now processing eight thousand mappers by one job tracker is a challenge. If you have got one hundred requests, one thousand requests, the count goes like that. So this is simple, you know, challenge. What you come across in your real-time business, right? This is a job tracker problem in 1.2 architecture. Guys, are you following with me? Yes, sir. Any questions? No. Right. And um, I would also talk about one more challenge. What happens when we, for the first time, uh, when the business deploys the uh, hard uh, you know, cluster, business doing very well, um, and the same, let's take the same example, mortgage advisor, mortgage advisor, franchise company. Okay. Um, and what they do is, uh, let's, let's take a McDonald's scenario. I would like to take a McDonald's scenario. Um, why I'm taking McDonald's scenarios, McDonald's, uh, you know, their network is huge just in the United States, just, just in Western countries, just globally. If we take yeah. globally, the size is huge. Uh, let's only take an example of United States, right? So in the United States, uh, the McDonald's domination is huge and the products they offer, food products they offer is huge. The vendors they have got is huge and their customers are huge, right? So one in two uh, people love McDonald's, okay? Every one, per, every one out of two you know, people, normally they visit at least once in a week, once in every two weeks, they visit McDonald's for breakfast, lunch, while they drive, right? It's quite a common thing. Now, what McDonald's um, you know, board wants to know every week, they want to know how they are performing, right? How each uh, franchise is performing, how their vendors are uh, performing, and what problems they are handling, especially from a uh, vendor side. What complaints they are quite often receiving it. Where are they in their competition? Burger King is also predominantly have got a very strong presence in the market. The market share is huge. They are one of the biggest competitor. And the count is still growing. The size is still growing. So these are the common uh, information the McDonald's chief uh, or a board members or um, the high level um, management team wants to know. Right Now for the first time, Take an example. For the first time, when McDonald's implements the Hadoop, um, you know, one dot o version, one dot o architecture into their business, business is doing well. Comparatively, the amount of data board they have got and the processing speed is very nice. They're happy with it. But remember, business just can't stack with the same amount of data, right? So it keep growing. Therefore, the data also grows. Now, what if there is a situation where they are processing? Um, how particular um, chicken nuggets, chicken nuggets, uh, business line, line of business is doing in the United States and other uh, three more categories are doing uh, in the business. 
in a particular uh, country that is United States. When we take that example, the system has to process billions of records in their system in parallel, right? And one single job tracker. I'm talking about one dot probation. All of a sudden, um, when it is processing the data, uh, one particular uh, rack is gone or multiple data nodes from multiple racks are gone. Is dead. Now, what it ha what the you know task of a job tracker? It has to identify where the data is lost or where the net where the um, uh, the chief component uh, hardware drivers are dead. And the job ha and their job is number one. It has to identify the dead data nodes, get the data, identify the data, uh, those uh, remaining copies available in the other clusters and other uh, data nodes and uh, create or copy it, replicate it to the other systems. We need to maintain the minimum replication count, right? Replication factor. So what if, if such a company like a McDonald's, if it come across this problem, uh, let's say they have got a 50 node cluster and uh, they lost uh, 100 GB worth of data today, this morning. Now what happens in that case? Uh, the system, I mean, one single job tracker, one hand, they have to process whatever the client requested to do it, client requested for the processing of a data. On the other hand, it has to replicate the data. Is everybody with me? Is everybody with me? Actually, something went wrong, sir. Something went wrong and uh, again logging. Is it? Yeah. Where, where did you lost? Uh, near chicken nugget. After chicken nugget, we lost something reloaded. And we saw Reka, Anish, are you with me? Yes, yes. sir. Did you continue or uh, did you lost? No, no. We can't. I continued. Okay, okay. So, Rohit, what, there was nothing. I lost it. Okay, I'll quickly reiterate it. Yeah. So, if the chief uh, of the businesses, chief directors and uh, board wants to know how the chicken nuggets, chicken mayo and few other burger line of businesses is doing in their business, in their market. Mm -hmm. So, what they want yeah. to do is, uh, one, they have got a one dot version in their business. Now, obviously, the amount of data what, um, you know, McDonald's have got in their clusters huge because they have got billions of records and you know you know like terabytes and petabytes of data they have got inside it right so when they process it obviously job tracker have got enough load to process that huge amount of data and what if um, they they have got a 50 node cluster okay they have got a 50 node cluster and they have they lost nearly about you know 20 GB of data is lost and uh, from a multiple data nodes from a multiple clusters now the task of a job tracker is what are the board requested to get the report details in detailed report they have to process it one hand on the mm -hmm. other hand they lost the data okay 20 gb of data is lost therefore there is a minimum um, um thumb rule what we need what we need to do is uh, um, this thing a replication factor Okay, three re replication factor account is three. Therefore, wherever the data is lost, the job tracker need to identify and make sure uh, count uh, minimum replication is uh, is available in the system. So it has to identify the lost data blocks and replicate it. This is a second job. Mm -hmm. One single job tracker handling multiple jobs. I mean, what if if this situation reoccurs? Obviously, it, it definitely reoccurs once in every once in a day or once in a month. That's okay. What if if it happens a couple of times in a month or multiple times in a in a week? Damn crazy, right? Yeah, really damn crazy. Therefore, it is something not uh, feasible, right? Let me take one mm -hmm. other best example. Okay. Um, always, um, I mean, technology changes every day. And what is the shift? What is the new paradigm in the IT industry? Data sciences, Internet of Things, cloud. Mm -hmm. These are the new paradigm in the industry, right? Now, almost every technology you talk about, people talking about a cloud, 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 right? So, multiple applications, multiple cloud infrastructures, and multiple data centers. Now, what happens if McDonald's wants to process 
um, 10 cloud applications data in their Hadoop infrastructure. That means it has to grab 10 applications data from multiple cloud infrastructures, let's say Salesforce, from SAP, from other applications, non, mm -hmm. uh, SAP, non ERP or legacy applications, it has to get the data from the cloud and process it for different department wise. Okay, now 1.2 version doesn't support that extensive scalable thing. Whatever the data you have got in your uh, MapReduce or whatever the data you have got in your cluster, using a simple MapReduce, process it and simple listener, simple job tracker, execute it and get you the delivery. But it is not that user friendly or process friendly to connect with your data, I mean cloud infrastructure and get the process. It's very simple. One single, one single liner job. I have got the data inside my data node and I'll process it using simple MapReduce job in a batch and I get you the delivery and get you the data. That's it. So that means it is limiting the capabilities of a Hadoop. Okay. So yeah, this is, I mean, obviously this is, these are these problems uh, or not just say okay uh, these problems are uh, you know hit by the few companies or few business processes obviously um, it is uh, limiting lot of preferred challenges because um, basically Hadoop is uh, you know uh, uh, advisable for the uh, large more massive data companies the big companies not for the small companies so obviously the requests or requirement for the companies are, are dynamic so therefore, if a, uh, when a Hadoop doesn't support these challenges, and obviously there is not something happy to them, right? So these are the challenges we have got in the Hadoop 1.0 version. Mm. Did I mention any points from the challenge point of view? Okay. I think these are the problems we come across in the data node. If I remember any other points from the 1.0 version problems, I do reiterate them, so keep note of it, okay? okay? Now, therefore, we have got 2.0 version released, and most of the problems were addressed in the 2.0 version, okay? Just try to understand the architecture, but don't stretch too much. Eventually, we explore one after another, okay? Now, okay. I'll quickly, talk about uh, three important things in 2.0 version. Rekha, Anish, are you with me? Any questions so far? No, Sujan. Rekha? No, Sujan. Okay. In 2.0 version, I would like to talk about three important advantages or features. The number one is federation. Federation is nothing but multiple name nodes what is a federation united states have got a federation right what does it mean federation multiple states group put together functions independently under the roof of one single governance right the same fundamental multiple states each state is independent from uh, independent governance from one to another independent policies independent taxation independent processes but under the single gov rule of the central government, which is United States Authority, right? So the same formula applies in the 2.0 version. That means you can have multiple name nodes, single name node, I mean, each individual name node is independent from the other name node, okay? That means high availability. Federation, federation is a concept of multiple name nodes, independent from one name node to another name node the why is why this federation concept is for high availability if one name node crashes you don't have to stop your business there is a standby name node okay here don't get confused with the secondary name node or a standby name node active name node is the still this remain the same fundamental one single name node performs the job of the processing the requests whereas the standby node when name node crashes then the second name node picks up the task 
and support the business you don't have to wait until the active name node is up and running and whereas the secondary name node here is still a checkpoint remember secondary name node term is deprecated that is replaced by checkpoint name node okay don't use the secondary name node checkpoint name node and uh, you need to remember one more thumb rule here here checkpoint is an optional in the 1.0 version checkpoint name node or a secondary name node is supported or advisable whereas 2.0 is optional because you have got alternative standby name node the biggest advantage here is you don't have to limit yourself with the name node count you can have a two name nodes or a 20 name nodes wow that's fantastic right so i can give maximum 19 percent assurance that the, the cluster can work predominantly one you know 24 7 you don't stop right that, that's that's great that's really great and there are many many challenges which are which are which have been addressed in this uh, you know architecture i'll take one after another in the previous version we have got one um, biggest problem one single job tracker one single listener manages multiple trackers but whereas the whole process is divided into resource manager what this guy resource manager does it takes how many resources i have got at this moment and what is the size of the client request how much of resource it consumes one particular request and accordingly it calculates and assign the job to the name node data nodes okay so each data node have got a node manager that name node manager will handle the task we'll, we'll get into that in detail further in a yarn architecture but in a very high level remember this resource manager coordinates with the available resources and expected or predicted um, resource uh, utilization per request and divides multiple requests okay so it's like calculation project manager activity okay so and we have got a node manager we have got app master application master we have got capacity scheduler so extensive functionality is being addressed in the 2.0 version under the roof of yarn concept yet another resource node right so we have got many many you know advantage advantages were introduced in the 2.0 version let's quickly recap three biggest challenges we come across in the 1.0 version rohit what was the first challenge what was the first challenge rohit yeah first challenge uh, the no horizontal in it. Mm, no horizontal scalability limitation right yeah. perfect yes sir arun uh, uh, anish what is the second availability what is the sorry second uh, challenge uh, second challenge mm -hmm. uh, like we can have a uh, like we have only one name node so it's already covered well, uh, mm -hmm. okay yeah yeah go on go on go on. okay availability if the name node breaks down if the system is down then obviously you can't assure your business that it runs 24 7 right availability reka what is the third challenge Rekha? Yes. What is the third challenge? Biggest the third challenge. Okay. Map reduce processing or overloaded listener and task tracker. Okay. Job tracker. So we have got one single job track you know uh, job tracker that co listener coordinate with multiple tasks at a time and all the process should go through the map reduce that means overloading overburdening right so these are the three you know biggest challenges 1.0 version have got so those are uh, you know addressed in the 2.0 version in the name of horizontal horizontal incremental of name nodes 
there is no manual recovery okay in the one dot option if the name node breaks down you as an administrator manually go through it understand the problem fix it and up and running what if if it if it happens in the middle of the night sleepless nights is expected or issued right so manual yeah. recovery is addressed in the two dot so if the one active node is you know one name node is dead then this standby node immediately picks it up therefore you can assure it you can look into it why the name node is dead but the business keep continue it doesn't hold no. so business is assured the th the third one is automatic switching if name node is dead uh, administrator understands okay it is dead so therefore let me switch it to the you know, standby node and then investigate the um, reason was the reason behind the problem no it's not required when the name node is dead immediately uh, the system switches to the standby node therefore you just get a notification saying that hey man i just switched out to the standby node now the active name node is changed you please have a look on the problem behind it okay so obviously uh, the business is assured i think uh, the biggest problem is addressed over there right i'll before i further deep dive into the um, two dot o architecture and other capabilities i would like to uh, remind you or uh, give you one important point okay here we need to remember number one point name node is a in different independent system okay that means data nodes are in used by, i mean data nodes uses cheap commodity hardware in a cluster and multiple clusters are are uh, you know maintained but whereas name nodes have got a high-end capability high-end hardware reliable robust system we maintain ram in memory is high big data always thumb rule big data always runs on in memory that is ram okay um, data nodes look at the size of the hardware but name node look at this size of your ram ram is important here that's why 100 gb 200 gb you know one terabyte of ram so that is the capability one petabyte of ram so that is the size we normally maintain at least one terabyte of ram 10 terabyte of ram we normally maintain what size you recommend for your business is depends on the amount of size that the data um, you know businesses stores and processes okay that is the de you know, deciding factor okay name node maintain such a high-end reliable secured um, you know hardware they maintain it and if you have got one or ten name nodes you maintain in your architecture you have to follow the same you know uh, protocol that means all the name nodes have got the same ram size same hardware capability same you know efficiency you need to maintain and each name node is independent okay independent hardware all these three name nodes shouldn't be hosted in one single machine all the three are independent systems independent um, you know uh, computer or independent system to be hosted okay because of the security understand this is the rule of thumb X. right Sir, can you tell me about the three components, the listener and the once again, it can you repeat you. those three components? It costs you. It costs you. Yes. Hmm? It costs you. I don't yeah. repeat just like that. <laughs> okay. Three components. One is a federation, high availability, and yarn processing, processing control. Okay, yarn processing control and multi tenancy. It's one single line yarn y a r n yarn processing control and multi tenancy that means it processes multiple systems multiple application data you see in the uh, resource manager you have got app master application master okay so we'll discuss about it in detail so it can it supports the cloud uh, architecture so that is the advantage federation high availability yarn processing control and multi tenancy okay see that these are the three capabilities <laughs> right so
so this is a hadoop uh, federation example okay i'll come to this uh, slide later but uh, just just for you now i would like to talk about this slide okay journal have you ever heard of this name journal journal if you see here on a very high level the architecture is changed okay in the 1.0 version we have got one single name node managed by multiple data nodes or multiple data nodes managed by single name node but and that's it this is a simple two tier kind of architecture it is not exactly two tier just you know two uh, you know stages two tier architecture but if you look at a, look at this slide you see the architecture is also completely changed the top most one is a journal node the middle layer is a name node and the bottom one is a data node in a very high level right so what that did now what is a journal node what does it do so journal node is single job is to it connects your data nodes sorry it connects your name nodes okay it connects your name node and uh, where it grab the lo edit log information from your active node okay it uh, get the uh, edit logs from your active nodes and that act, um, you know information whatever the you know you know transactional details all this information is retrieved in journal node and distributes among or across your name nodes so one name node will not directly connect with another name node if you look over here secondary or standby node not secondary standby node standby name node is not directly connecting with the active node it is not at all connecting it is connecting through your journal node that means journal node integrating the name nodes okay so that is the number one you know reason why the journal node is present in the architecture journal node connects i mean first of all it get the edit logs it get the metadata information and uh, you know shared among the name node therefore the data is you know consistently maintains um, among your name nodes okay so that is one of the biggest benefit of the name node and also a journal node also if one name node dead then we discussed about the standby name node picks up the in a job right how does it happen that is performed by the journal node that task will be instead of you manually doing it journal node identifies oh this node is dead therefore i need to switch it to the standby node right that job will be for big up um, that, that thing will be you know uh, 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 taken care by the journal node okay so that is the second task that's why this um, whole um, you know the whole thing is called high availability okay the whole this whatever the um you know resolution whatever the solution we you know introduced in the 2.4 is called a high availability high availability in the sense 24 7 guaranteed 99 percent system uptime guaranteed that is called high availability any questions over here no sir good so this is the job of a journal node here we need to remember few other important points Reka, Anish, Rohit. Yes, sir. One at a time. One active mm -hmm. node, uh, one name node is active at a time. Multiple name nodes will not function at a time. Okay. In a cluster, only one active node functions at a time. Okay. Whether you have got two name nodes or three standby name nodes, it should be only one active name node functions at a time. Okay. So that is one of the um uh, what we called uh, uh, architecture thumb rule or architecture principle okay and okay. that okay. active name node functions and that active name node write the logs write the logs you remember what is a log anish what is active uh, edit log edit log that right? is mm -hmm. uh, it replicates the data I mean, it stores the last transaction of the data, which is uh, done before it is lost. Not, uh, okay, uh, that is a scenario. Okay, see, description is right. 
credit log is a transactional data before it yeah. lost before it go down no, that is that is a in a in an instant that is a scenario okay you don't merge the scenario with the concept anyway so yeah whatever you said is right it records, it, it, yes, the last it records the transactions simple like yes. it record the transactions right so one active node always write the transactions because that is doing its job and rest of standby nodes read only mode it update their edit you know blogs uh, copying from the journal node okay standby okay. standby node name nodes always read the data active name node write the data understand so this journal node name called q j m quorum journal manager okay the topmost node we call we see is a journal node right this architecture name is called qjm quorum journal manager okay can you spell sir quorum q u o r u m quorum quorum journal manager or no uh, high availability qjm or name node high availability name node high availability quorum journal manager whatever the slide you see whatever the slide you see and whatever the architecture we see here is called a no, uh, no, no name node high availability quorum journal manager right take a slide of this one okay take a slide of this one click on print screen from your system and just put it don't take with the mobile phone doesn't look um, clear right so what is a quorum okay quorum is why quorum i understand journal manager is something it uh, uh, connects your multiple name nodes and read through the uh, i mean share the edit log among your name nodes that is fine that i understood and what is quorum quorum is another function inside the quorum journal manager the job of a quorum is to check the health or a heartbeat of your data nodes okay quorum is used to check the health of your cluster how the cluster is doing what name nodes are well, which name nodes are alive which data nodes are dead so all these health check is performed by the quorum okay, okay? so this is the you know use of it i'm just checking any other points missed out right okay yeah one more point i missed to to uh, mention it mm -hmm. reka i want this time i seriously want to ask you this question reka i have got four notes in the take this um, you know scenario of uh, uh, our remember uh, mortgage advisor company they have got 50 branches franchises over the country right so they are comparatively small um when you when you compare with the mcdonalds so in their scenario the exact screen what you see over here is the architecture they have got they have got two name nodes and four data nodes and three journals they have got now um how does the uh, heartbeat or um, health check or data node report uh, you know uh, communicated between multiple name nodes and data nodes okay let me uh, make my question very clear um in the 1.2 version we discussed about name node uh, get periodical update from the data nodes about their health about their availability about their data node report every one minute right now in this architecture yeah. um, can you guess we have got multiple name nodes we have got multiple data nodes horizontally we can increase it now can you tell me how that feature or how that you know report works in this architecture so now data nodes from the data nodes point of view the question is man in the first version uh, we have got only one sorry, name node yeah. but we have got multiple yeah, name nodes hmm? sorry every year every journal node is a name node here journal node is not a name node journal node is a, an another component another you know uh, added you know management uh, uh, tool okay journal manager journal node, node is con is basically journal name node a uh, journal uh, manager and a name node is different journal is different mm -hmm. this architecture okay. called quorum journal manager okay. name node high availability quorum journal manager this architecture called 
okay so from the data node point of view in this uh, scenario 2.0 okay we have got multiple name nodes uh, to whom to share this uh, health report or a status update or a data node report to uh, to name node rekha mm. did you understand my question yeah yeah active node Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Anish, any guess? Uh, I think uh, the data node will send the data, uh, the data to their standby name node, and from that it goes to journal node, maybe. Mm -hmm. Rohit, I didn't get the question. So can you repeat the question? <laughs> Very good answer. Yeah. What my question is? In the 1.2 version, uh, name node data nodes uh, every one minute they send their uh, report to name node. How many data nodes yeah. are alive and their uh, heartbeat and uh, whether their heartbeat is nothing but their availability to name node. Yeah. In the yes. first version, we have got only one name node, one name node. But here in this architecture, we have got multiple name nodes. Horizontally, we can increase it. At the same time, we have got multiple mm -hmm. data nodes. In this case, how from a data node point of view? How that report goes and where that goes, or who whom that uh, you know shared with. All multiple can't go at a time, right? Hmm. Multiple reports can go at a time. No, you tell me from a data node point of view, um, whom with whom. Their heartbeat and the status should be shared with. Maybe the quorum. Hmm. Okay. Unfortunately, none of you guys uh, are correct. Okay. Irrespective, of course. Point number one: one active one name node is active at a time. That is fine. But here, all yeah. the three name nodes or four name nodes or forty name nodes, whatever the size you have got, all these. Name nodes get their heartbeat and their status availability in parallel. Okay, so therefore, one data node should update their heartbeat and report to all the name nodes. You see over here the bottom. The multiple active nodes are active at a name. See, that is the difference, uh, Arohit. One active node. What is active? One point, one what is active node? It read. It process the transactions and update the transactions. I did yeah. transactions in journal, and journal share that read mm -hmm. log to um, you know rest of name nodes. Okay, here processed processing mm -hmm. done by one single name node, but data nodes connect with multiple name nodes. Why? Why yeah. data nodes have to share their availability? Heartbeat to standby nodes. The reason why is as soon as in the previous version, if name node dies, secondary name node will not pick up the data, pick up the process mm -hmm. checkpoint. Okay, that just to tell you what is your FS image and what are your edit logs. So okay, to do that as manually. soon as your system is up and running, that will pick up the data from checkpoint and run the job. Until then, mm -hmm. system will be halt. Here, one of the biggest, uh, you know, uh, you know, biggest absences. Check by node do not have the data node health or data node availability or data node report. It doesn't hold that. It just to hold the FS image and the edit log checkpoint, right? If your checkpoint have got this information, that is your edit log, heartbeat, availability, where the data is where, and which data node is what. If you have that information, you can become a name node, right? So the same yeah. way, all this information is shared across your all the name nodes. Okay, edit log is fine, but name nodes have got the consistent heartbeat and data node report. So the moment active node is dead or unfunctioning, immediately the standby name node in a position to pick up. Because they know 
what is the status of the data nodes what are the status of the data nodes that's why it just picks up the data it just mm -hmm. picks up the control over the data nodes okay it doesn't have to ask hey tell me wh what is your situation yes i have got your situation and journal node is always there to get you the very latest edit node every minute you get your updates edit nodes every minute fs image is updated so standby node is is required nothing special no, nothing anything extra to pick up the job right mm -hmm. it has got logs it has got fs image it has got a data node heartbeat and report therefore standby node have got a full control on the architecture full control on the process yeah right yeah when uh, when active node gone standard node will take up the everything that's why data nodes whether you have got a two node two name nodes or 20 name nodes mm -hmm. all the data okay. nodes should update their status to all the name nodes clear for you guys yes yes you need to remember these uh, thumb rules okay without that you 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 can't put you, you can't say yourself you're good at uh, um, this thing um, big data okay this is the core for anybody and everyone okay now yeah. until here this is okay let's talk about the journal node okay now in the journal node the we always recommend we in the sense um, the hadoop um, always recommends to uh, adopt uh, odd numbers okay odd number of journal nodes all these journal nodes are controlled by the journal manager that is a different story but journal nodes is again like a hardware component it's like a, again software piece installed in a different hardware component the same thing like a name node it, these are the uh, multiple uh, hardware systems okay hosted independently now um, even hardware is always unsure un unassured it can go any time the way how data nodes the way how name node gone journal node also gone because it is hardware functioned by the software application inside it right so for a high availability for a fault tolerant uh, hadoop architecture always recommend to go with the odd number you go with 3 5 7 9 like this number of you know um, journal nodes so the minimum is three journal nodes okay 3 5 7 9 you go by odd number the reason why odd number is journal nodes always get update if you see over here in the topmost uh, thing one active node connects with multiple journal nodes right and one journal node is connecting connecting with all the name nodes all the name nodes right so many to many relationship we have got here isn't it so here one active node update their edit logs fs image with all the journals but at least majority of the journals okay by any chance if one or two journal nodes dies at least the third one remains to hold back your system up and running okay mm -hmm. for the tall for the fault tolerant reason hadoop architecture architecture recommends to go with the multiple journal nodes uh, i mean by odd number three minimum three and go on by odd number okay to support the at least um, majority of the system two out of three four out of five systems get your you know edit log minimum is three okay so it depends on the size of your architecture size of your cluster size of your data you go for journal any questions so far no sir. so if two generals not uh, inactive so one general can handle those things that that's the reason okay that's the reason majority in the sense it is not saying 100 percent at a time because it, it runs in parallel edit log updation mm -hmm. all these activities happens in uh, in parallel and depends on this uh, you know resource available depends on the peak times it might not be able to update all the systems it could only end up update one journal or two general when the time resource is you know available then it updates the rest of the journal so uh, in that situation what happens at least one or two journal nodes dies uh, at least uh, the other one or two systems can support the your architecture therefore you need to have multiple journal nodes okay and remember 
all the journal nodes have got the equivalently uh, same hardware capability same ram the hardware requirement is same and all these journals are not hosted in one single machine all these are hosted in multiple independent systems for a tol fault tolerant and high availability reasons understand okay good any other questions no sir. okay see here in this slide i spoke about journal load yeah journal load is a concept okay why yeah. journal load for a high availability guarantee there should be somebody the main job of a journal load is you need to you in a sense journal load share the edit log share the fs image transactional data among your name nodes that is a simple reason isn't it that stands on top yeah. of the name node that name node won't directly name nodes directly won't integrate with each other these are connected by the some ideal journal. component called journal node that is a simple job okay through this concept of gen, journal node you could i mean you could connect all your name nodes okay this process is called high availability or why we need high why we need journal to assure your system that your system lives 24/7 this is called high availability correct the same way yes. this high availability achieved in two modes one is using the quorum node okay or journal node sorry quorum journal node one method the other method is nfs network file system if you don't want to implement a, a journal node concept of course you can give the high assurance uh, i mean high uh, um, you know high availability is nothing but continuity of your system all the times so your continuity can be assured with the other concept called nfs network file system the second uh, method network file system in sense here you don't have a name node on top of the head on top of name node head you may not have a journal name node but what you can do is all your name node, this is the second option i'm talking about okay because um mcdonald's client okay rohit um, you know went to mcdonald's client to implement the hadoop uh, you know this uh, uh, hadoop prudato uh, architecture for them because they have got money and they can do it and whereas um, the clients like uh, mortgage advisors um, they are not as you know budget you know um they don't have a, as as much uh, enough budget as a mcdonald's have got isn't it they're not too um you know financially strong as like the other client therefore what reka advise okay um you don't have a you don't have to go for journal load i have got a better alternative that is called a network file system okay what is the network file system look if you could connect of course name nodes are hosted in independent systems in a different different environment or a different data centers okay name node you have got two name nodes one name node is in one hardware computer the other one is in other hardware computer on top of it she also advised okay you don't host both the systems in one single data center you hold active node in one data center which is in united states arizona arizona and the other uh, you know data center is in the oklahoma okay and these are the two data centers i recommend you host this by any chance one system because of the natural calamities or whatever the reasons um, you know one data center is lost at least the other center pick up the data okay that is what she recommended reka is your recommendation correct this is what you recommended isn't it yes sujan yeah but how you could achieve this is if you can connect these two data centers with one network if you connect these two two data centers with a private network um, the active edit logs fs image can be shared among these two data centers isn't it that is possible right yes reka yes network uh, is nothing but these two machines can talk with each other yeah okay network uh, it won't directly um, you know it won't uh, it is not required to connect with any systems it's simply these two data centers private vpn network 
kind of a thing mm-hmm. okay so these uh, vpn virtually these two name nodes are shared are connected by a network simple network so that simple network hold one simple system one server that server collect the data edit log from active node and that active node simple server you know shared that nodes periodically as a batch job with the rest of your name nodes that simple architecture in our in a company for client one server multiple clients right how the server and the clients are connected with one single network right the same way the database application logic everything is shared uh, by you know the network among the clients and the server the same way one single ne- simple network the same logic simple logic not too complicated one network shared by one server that is a network file system that server name is called network file system that server what it does it collects the data from active name node and distribute among your uh, name nodes periodically once every minute once every 15 seconds depends as as uh, she recommended to do it okay that is the simple infrastructure simple using the simple infrastructure you can recommend for your um, you know budget con- uh, budget conscious clients that is called nfs network file system so quorum journal node or quorum journal is one approach and Ne- network file system is the second approach for a concept called high availability of your cluster any questions so far no yes. all clear yes i would like to talk about this slide for a minute no. this is federation uh, anish what is federation uh like a group of federation is like group of states uh, having their own uh, governance which comes under a single uh, uh what we call which comes under a single pre- uh, presidential you know it's uh, in the general term hmm. Hmm. it's very simple as one of the example federation is nothing what it is independent from one to another but controlled under under the roof of one governing body independent from one to another governing by un, under the roof of one governing body okay as simple as that see why that uh, concept of federation is one of the best example we could say is name nodes you know in this architecture name node 1 name node 2 name node 3 k n is like you know name you, know, you can you can that means you can have any number of name nodes in the simple architecture so here one of the advantages this name node is not directly depending on the other name nodes of course the data is shared edit logs and all shared among these uh, systems but um, all these uh, fs image are updated all the times your edit log each name node update their edit lo- update their fs image with the latest edit logs and get the hard bit from data nodes this concept is anyway there but there are Uh, biggest advantage one of the best scenario i can pull out of this uh, name node uh, i mean hadoop 2.0 version do you know what is that in a mcdonalds or let's say take a client one of my biggest client i you know support ge general electric okay how many businesses ge or else <laughs> not ge let's take reliance because we all from india so at least we heard of the name reliance how many of you haven't heard of reliance dhirubhai ambani reliance industries yeah i am everyone <laughs> everyone heard of it reliance yeah. have got presence in almost all businesses almost all the dominant businesses right so if a, if we all i mean if we are asked to implement uh, big data for their businesses how we could use this uh, hadoop infrastructure or hadoop 2.0 version tell me this can we implement one hadoop or a one cluster for one business they have got over 200 businesses that means 200 clusters is that something uh, you think okay. is nice to have it if we do so i think it's never ending project isn't it yeah right too big too big 
and uh, it's it's not really wise idea to have 200 in independent projects independent clusters independent data nodes it's not right mm-hmm. if we could ask for a better solution if you ask for a better you know, betterment uh, this is the way we could do it what is that all to data nodes hold the data that is fine no need to change anything in data nodes block stores 128 mb that is fine we store it but we play around on the name node space federation space what we do simply is instead of creating multiple clusters we create one cluster services for entire organization and each name node is designated to process one set of data of a business okay one business one name node uh, set take care of the telecom industry one name node will take care of the oil and gas the other one you know third one take care of the you know what you call natural resources or you know financial services the fourth one takes care of the insurance likewise um, as many businesses you have got the set of name nodes can take care of your one business shared by data nodes if a data is growing that means in this uh, three months first three months we are implementing big data for insurance or telecom okay roll out name node let's put slightly uh, you know federation mode federation mode in the sense instead of one name node what i do is one name node and two supporting standby nodes okay that is called one federation one set one active name node two standby name nodes shared by data data uh, data nodes in the bottom okay quorum node that is fine quorum general node let let it have it okay after 3 months the business is rolled over and the business started using it and from fourth month we have to roll roll in the you know from telecom we have already rolled in rolled over and we need to insurance go for insurance right reka Mm-hmm. Yes. Rekha. Yes, Rujan. Yeah, I want you to tell me about this scenario. Okay. Now, in this case, if insurance is going to implement in this business case, because these are the business scenarios, live business cases, you can't hear anywhere. Unless you work, you don't know this scenario. In all these examples, I'm illustrating you out of my practical experience. Okay. You can't get it. And if you just explain this scenario to interview. i think they get you a lot of confidence they gain lot of confidence on you please listen carefully and try to engage your analytical skills out of this architecture so you gain more and your understanding will also be a concrete okay and i understand we all working on odd times but yes this must be as productive as we can and that's the reason why i keep tabbing you guys please don't take me wrong if at all you find it quite inconvenient do let me know i don't disturb you okay right so here one federation is not, doesn't mean that one name node okay note this point one name one federation doesn't mean that one single name node a set of name nodes is called one federation okay now a business case my client was different over here but that client is not uh, is not known to you therefore i used a client name which we familiar in india therefore i i picked up reliance but i'm not really sure if reliance have got this architecture or not but ideal case for a company is like reliance so one federation is not it doesn't mean that one name node set of name nodes is called one federation one one set of in name nodes in the, sense, in the sense one active node two or three or multiple standby name nodes is called one federation and you can implement any number of federations that that is possible for you and one federation is independent from the other federation of course are controlled by the quorum general manager or network file system whatever the on top of it you adopt it so this is the case now a best scenario is in the uh, in the telecom businesses we first rolled over a business saying that we have got 10 data nodes and one federation of um, name nodes one federation i have got one active and two standby name nodes we have got and uh, quorum general manager you know, let's say 3 or 5 7 whatever it is that's fine but after 3 months the business is roll over with hadoop now we need to roll in the insurance business okay insurance business now in this case just to copy 
the whole infrastructure and create one cluster what i simply did i just added one more federation into the existing architecture i just added one more federation that means one again the same one name one active name node two standby name nodes for the insurance business and connected by one quorum general okay that quorum telecom is independent from your uh, insurance telecom business is different insurance is different they are not directly you know controlled but your either nfs or your quorum controls the availability okay that you can add it and name node one federation is added now insurance is added to the cluster therefore what i simply do is i add three more or four more data nodes okay and all these three plus added three or four let's say added insurance for telecom three seven data nodes are same same so here insurance data is stored in any any of seven data nodes telecom data is also stored in any of the same same data nodes so here data nodes become shared for all the businesses understand mm -hmm. and the cluster yes. the federation is independent for the business ardhamaina <laughs> understand everybody yes yes this is the simple architecture for your hadoop go on describe this example to anybody and they have they i mean they can say okay these people are outstanding they know what hadoop does and they know how hadoop 2.0 dot work can be implemented that's it okay uh, okay any questions no i think today is very productive isn't it we learned a lot yeah won't we a lot something so these yeah. are so we activate the out 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 file we activate the out file id we created hot mail hot mail hot mail you created hot mail yeah good man good um so do you have a name or this thing uh, um uh, one note in your system one note i didn't know i need to download the one note one note uh, you don't have to download one note is basically if you have got uh, uh, windows uh, office not windows office you are using mac right if you have got microsoft yeah. office uh, you search for it one note you will get it if you don't have just go for uh, you know one note and google it Online. how to connect your one note with your how to sync not connect how to sync one note with hotmail that's it okay and uh, don't use the pen and paper you lose it okay especially you know what what i you know what i'm doing right now here the whole big data is believe me it is just came into the market uh, you know about 2006 and 7 but actually for the past 3 to 4 years it is really started into the market started you know exploring i mean expanding therefore um, all this concept is completely new and every day new concept is coming in okay and to describe you uninterruptedly from your point you know srujan is uh, you know taking the class but he is taking the breaks if i keep you know too much of breaks and um, you know if i can't give you continuously one after another the points then you you don't get the confidence therefore what i do is whenever i come across the new concept i put all these things in the in in my you know one note okay in one thing in in you know, i create mm -hmm. one you know file inside it and horizontally vertically i create like in you know, a concept wise split across and i just simply get the print out of it and now this print out is my points and he, here i have got you know bunch of papers nearly about 80 pages in the past 3 days i covered through my own research okay so my own research i put it in a name node and i'm just um, <laughs> what name node in this one note and i just you know take you through those uh, points now you have got everything what you needed therefore you don't have to uh, research like me how i get this so how, how can i share that sir hmm? uh, i log in the uh, one note online i logged in just now no like uh, I, i'll i'll you know uh, we'll discuss about this thing later you please google it the reason why i don't want to spend the time is uh, first let me do one thing okay.